In my last video on calculus, in particular calculus part 2, we talked about the first principle of differentiation and the derivative of a function. In this video, we shall be using the first principle of differentiation to prove that if y equals a x raised to the power n, then dy dx will be equal to a n x raised to the power n minus 1. Please check the link in the description below to take you to the video on calculus part 2 and calculus part 1. Welcome to GER Hub Mathematics and Statistics Lessons. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do well to subscribe now by clicking the subscription button below and then endeavor to turn on your notification button. Let's do this. Welcome back. So let's go straight into proving that if y equals a x raised to the power n, then dy dx will be equal to a n x raised to the power n minus 1. We are going to be using the first principle of differentiation and starting with a step 1. So let's begin. So my step 1 would require me to obtain delta y. Okay, delta y, the increment in y. Take note, an increment of in y, an infinitesimal increment in y would only come from an infinitesimal increment in x. So what I'm going to do is write out what we've been given y equals a x raised to the power n. So if y changes by changing y, an infinitesimal change in y, this must have come from an infinitesimal change in x. Okay? So this is what you're going to get. Now if you make change in y the subject of formula, then this will give you a x plus change in x in bracket all raised to the power n minus y. But what have we been given y to be? We've been given y to be a x raised to the power n. So in place of this y here, all you have to do is to put in a x raised to the power n. So I'm going to put in that into the last line and that will give me this. Okay? So the first step was to increase y by changing y, taking note of the fact that that must have come from change in x, okay? And increment in x. And then making change in y, the infinitesimal change in the independent variable, the subject of formula, and that will give us this next line. From this line comes the last line here, that change in y equals a in bracket x plus change in x raised to the power n minus what y is, in this case, a x raised to the power n. Now, what I'm going to be doing next, still in step one, is to expand this. Okay, now I'm going to be expanding this. Please, please, and please, if you do not understand binomial expansion or binomial theorem, please check the link in my video, this particular video, to take you to my video, my earlier video on the binomial expansion to understand what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be expanding this and thereafter putting it into my step one to get delta x further simplified. So watch out for what I'm going to be doing so that you can understand what is being done. Now let us expand x plus change in x raised to the power n so that thereafter we can infuse our result into step 1, okay? So what I'm going to do is to use binomial expansion, to exp the binomial expansion theorem to get this particular um, expansion done, okay? So I'm going to put this. This will start with n combination 0. The first combinatorial coefficient will be n combination 0 and that will be times x carrying the highest power n times change in x all raised to power 0, okay? Plus, the second combinatorial coefficient will be n combination 1, x raised to power n minus 1, so n drops by 1, and that would mean change in x increases by 1. Plus, the next one, which is n combination 2, x raised to power n minus 2, n drops by 1 again, and that will be change in x raised to power 2 plus this continues plus the second to the last term if you keep up with the expansion and that will give us x raised to power one at this point in time we change in x all raised to power n my n, n minus one plus finally n combination n x raised to power zero and change in x all raised to power n okay so let's simplify this um result what we've gotten in the first line. Let's simplify that. So we are going to have n combination 0 gives you 1. So 1 times x raised to power n is x raised to power n. Then changing x raised to power 0 gives you 1. So 1 times x raised to power n times 1 will give you x raised to power n. 
okay for the first term now i'm going to the next term n combination one anything combination itself or anything combination one rather gives you that thing so n combination one will give us n i'm going to write n then x raised to the power n minus one comes down here then you have change in x all raised to the power one giving you change in x so that concludes the second term i'm going to go to the third term for the third term n combination two will give you n in bracket n minus one all over two so for for details on binomial expansion if you are not familiar with binomial expansion the link is in the description below to take you to my video on binomial expansion okay so you would you will get to understand what is being done here now i'm going to put x raised to power n minus 2 and then change in x raised to power 2 okay then let's come over to the second to the last term n combination n minus 1 when you combine a thing with one shot of itself it will give you n so n combination n minus 1 is n x raised to power 1 will return x and then change in x all raised to power n minus 1 plus n combination n a thing com combines with itself on that combination to give you 1 so n combination n is 1 and 1 will multiply x raised to power 0 take note by indices x raised to power 0 will give you 1 so 1 times 1 will give you 1 and that 1 will multiply change in x raised to power n to give you change in x raised to power n so this is what you are going to get when you do the expansion okay now take note in in our step one we had change in y to be equal to a in bracket we had change in y to be equal to a in bracket x plus change in x all raised to power n minus a x raised to power n so i'm going to use a to multiply everything we've obtained here for x plus change in x all raised to power n so when a multiplies x raised to power n you're going to have a x n okay plus when a multiplies this you're going to have a n x raised to the power n minus 1 changing x when a multiplies this you're going to have a in bracket a n in bracket n minus 1 x raised to the power n minus 2 changing x all squared and this will be all over 2 when a multiplies the second to the last term you're going to have a x changing x raised to the power n minus 1 plus when a multiplies you're going to have a change in x raised to the power n then finally recall that we had the last term to be a x raised to the power n now look at it carefully you will notice that a x raised to the power n can actually wipe this out so a x raised to the power n minus a x raised to the power n would give you zero and that goes so that brings me to the next thing at this point we will now write out our final result to conclude our step one so let's write out our final result step one is concluded with this writing out the final results of the expansion this okay so when you write it out let's see what we get a n n minus one all over two x raised to power n minus two change in x all squared plus dot 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 plus a x change in x all raised to the power n minus 1 plus a in bracket change in x raised to the power n so this concludes step one what have we done in step one we have been able to obtain change in y that is the increment the infinitesimal increment in the dependent variable y so that brings me to step two so let's move to step two so what are we to do in step two in step two we are going to divide through by changing x and why is that so step two is all about getting the gradient function okay so what do we do here i'm going to say changing y divided by changing x would mean dividing each term in the result we obtained earlier on by changing x now when changing x divides the first term you are going to have a n x raised to the power n minus one because changing x will cancel this changing x plus when changing x divides the second term it is going to cancel one out of the two changing x you have here and that will give you a n in bracket n minus 1 x raised to the power n minus 2 times change in x all over 2 here plus okay dot 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 to the second to the last term and when change in x cancels these you're going to have um, n minus 2 because it will cancel out 1 out of the change in x there and that will give us a x change in x all raised to the power n minus 2 plus finally it will cancel 1 out of this change in x raised to the power n leaving us with change in x raised to the power n minus 1 okay 
So you're going to end up having a change in x raised to the power n minus 1. Okay? So this is the gradient function that has been obtained and it concludes step 2. So what have we obtained? We have obtained the gradient function to be equal to a n x raised to the power n minus 1 plus a n in bracket n minus 1 all over 2 x n raised to, uh, raise to power n minus 2 times change in x plus ellipsis plus a x in bracket change in x raised to the power n minus 2 plus a in bracket change in x raised to the power n minus 1 and that concludes step 2. So let's go to the final step which concludes what we are doing and that is step 3. So what are we going to be doing in step 3? In step 3 we are going to be obtaining the derivative. So what will the derivative be? Remember in our video on differentiation that is the derivative of a function and the first principle of differentiation we have said that the derivative of a function simply means taking the limit as change in x the independent variable tends to zero of the gradient function so the y dx will be equal to taking the limit of what we have obtained for the gradient function change in y all over change in x now i'm going to bring that quickly back into the spotlight so that you see what we have obtained so this is what we had obtained we had obtained this plus this plus ellipsis this plus this now what it means is this as change in x tends to zero if we take the limiting value of this gradient function change in y all over change in x then that would mean taking the limit of each term in this expression now taking the limit of each term in this expression means that wherever we find change in x that particular term will be multiplied by zero so in place of changing x here i'm going to be putting zero in place of changing x here i'm going to be putting zero in place of changing x here i'm going to be putting zero the only term that will remain is this term that has no change in x so what does that mean it means the limiting value as change in x tends to zero would give us the only term that has no change in x and that is this term okay so the only term that will be left when we take the limiting value of the gradient function change y over change in x as change in x tends to zero will be this term here that has no change in x and that would mean having a n x raised to power n minus one so if y is equal to a um, x raised to power n minus a uh, raised to power n sorry then indeed dy dx dy dx must surely be equal to a multiplied by n x raised to power n minus 1 and that concludes the proof thank you for watching this video do like share and subscribe to the channel make your good comments on our videos we welcome them and i'll be seeing you in my next video thank you